Many of you will have heard about Nigel Farage and his fight against NatWest Group, claiming the scalps of Alison Rose and Peter Flavel so far. Last week, the Homeland Party published an explanation of the situation on our website with a list of banks we have reason to believe have indeed discriminated on political grounds, with our own party being spuriously denied services, along with several other recent entrants into party politics, such as the Reclaim Party and even the Love Party. The Equality Act 2010, which is UK-wide, protects a great many things, but it does not specifically protect political beliefs or in alignment with a political party. Instead, the current legal framework only extends protections to religious or philosophical beliefs, leading to a body of case law that would grant university-educated vegan communists the full protection of the law, whilst the patriotic working-class man in the street gets no protection whatsoever, no matter how logical, rational or deeply held his beliefs are. And while the state cannot violate your fundamental human rights through discrimination or deny you freedom of expression, private businesses are not held to the same standard in law, no matter how essential their services are. But what about the bigger picture? What does this story say about discrimination in the UK today? Not just in banking services, but employment as well. Many people will have lost their jobs for perfectly reasonable political views expressed outside of work. Polling data and voting patterns have shown for decades that the vast majority of people would like to see an end to mass immigration, but we often see people struggling to talk openly about it. As a nation, we live in fear of political discrimination, in fear of being branded of whatever ist or ism is trending and losing out because of it. How can we have a democracy if people with political beliefs contrary to the banks are denied services? Where does it end? Refusing them a phone line? Gas? Electric? Even water? Nigel Farage is now saying he wants to form a lobby group to pressure the government for reform in the banking sector. The Homeland Party feels this doesn't go far enough. We think the only viable solution is one that already exists in Northern Ireland. Fair Employment and Treatment Order 1998 protects your political beliefs so long as they're expressed lawfully, without violence, and protects you from discrimination and victimisation on those grounds, be it from an employer and from discrimination by a service provider. It actually references bank facilities, as well as offering a whole host of other much-needed protection in other areas, such as education. Simply transposing this Northern Ireland specific law into the wider body of UK law would give a guarantee of services for everyone and give them the confidence to say what they think without fear of discrimination or victimisation. How has it gone unnoticed that we have a postcode lottery on our rights and freedoms in the UK? With Northern Ireland having extra rights, with Scotland clamping down on what you can say in your own home due to the machinations of Hamza Youssef, and in England and Wales, the police regularly knocking on doors to check your thinking, even making arrests. Liberal tolerance really is only shown towards tolerant liberals. The political indoctrination and impression of our people has already reached an intolerable level. If we can't speak openly and frankly about the problems and divisions in our society, how can we have a hope in hell of solving them? Why should we continue in a system where what you can and cannot say is determined by metropolitan liberals working in the banks, in the media and in the police? They will talk about equality and how much they love diversity and inclusion, but there is to be no diversity of opinion and no inclusion for those who dissent. It is becoming increasingly clear that things have turned out as George Orwell predicted, a world where everyone is equal, but some are more equal than others. And it's a sorry state of affairs to have to ask for more laws to give you back rights that your grandparents already enjoyed, the right to think freely and speak freely. It's time for us to speak out against the liberal bourgeois tyranny and reclaim our ancestral rights to think what we want and to say what we want without fear of hindrance by the state or any other bureaucracy.